locally reach its profit maximum. It can be here, here, or even here. But for the economic welfare, the market equilibrium is the only destination and all other expressions should be prevented. So a monopoly leads to dead weight loss, inefficient allocation, and reduced technical progress. But nevertheless, there are monopolies or nearly monopolies with a positive effect for the economic welfare, like the telecommunication or energy sector. Or do you think it is better to have one power line for every energy company? And that's the problem with monopolies. Okay, so I hope it further clarifies your you know, uh, knowledge about monopoly, but it still raised some questions, right? So let's try to answer it. So <clears throat> now the next part is why monopoly arises, right? So the fundamental cause of monopoly is the barrier to entry. So recall our discussion regarding competition. In competition, there is no barrier to entry. There is free entry and exit, right? But in monopoly, there is no free exit and free entry, right? So how is that? Let's just talk about that. So monopoly remains the only seller due to this barrier and uh, because other firms they cannot entry uh, uh, you know enter the market due to that barrier so there are three sources on which or three ways in which monopoly can arise number one ownership of a key resources like your water supply company it's a key resource they own it so they started laying the you know you can see uh, the water line pipelines and, and right if another company founds a water well or water resources so it is easy for him to come to the market answer is no because sometimes fixed cost creates a barrier to entry because look at that the pipes they install the dig you know you know the streets and you know water flows they install motor heavy motors and all this stuff so if in order to compete in the market the other company need to spend a lot of money a lot of money to spread the infrastructure or look at the you know the example of railways you know the tracks if if any other company wants to enter as a competitor then he needs to you know lay the the tracks by the you know engines trains it's going to be huge, huge cost, right? So ownership of a key resource basically gives you advantage as well. So if some other finds the ownership of a key resource, the only thing is that he would sell that key resource to this company, right? Simple. So sometimes the governments give a single firm the exclusive right to produce some goods. Do we have this? Yeah. Well, let me just read the name and then we discuss one by one. And the third one is cost of production make, uh, makes a single producer more efficient than the larger number of producers. We'll talk about that. This is especially very important. So number one, ownership of a key resources, right? So uh, I already explained that. So there is a you know case study on page 289 called De Beer Diamonds uh, Monopoly. You could just, you know, this is for your curiosity. The number two government uh, created monopolies when government gives rights to a firm to produce, not other firms to produce, right? So governments may restrict entry by giving a single firm the exclusive right to sell a particular good in certain market, right? For example, Shanghai, Subway in Shanghai. So there is no other market. Uh, so there is no other company in Shanghai. Shanghai Electric Company, right? Shanghai Natural Gas Company. Shanghai Public Transport, including, you know, you can just pay through one card, right? You can enjoy public transport. You can enjoy taxis. You can enjoy the uh, 
subway system. So it's all are under Shanghai Transport, right? So Chinese government has given exclusive right to Shanghai Transport Company that you manage all the public transports, right? Similarly, the US grant monopoly to network solution incorporation, which maintain databases of all the .com, .net, and .org websites. Similarly, the biggest tools to create monopoly by the governments are patent and copyrights. So patent and copyright laws are two important examples of how government creates a monopoly to serve the public interest, right? This is more, more common. These type of monop monopolies are more common. Ownership of a key resources, of course, they are also, you know, a solid, uh, you know, base for it's, it's a solid base of uh, uh, monopoly. But in the future, in, in, in some time, when time passes, these monopolies, ownership of a key resources may uh, see their competitors as well. So we'll talk about uh, in our coming slides how this happens. Number third, natural monopoly. So many students confuse with, you know, the, the, the natural monopoly with the ownership of a key resources. So natural monopolies is something else. Ownership of a key resources monopoly is something else. So natural monopoly is that. So we talked about the characteristics of average total cost, right? Every total cost is U-shaped curve. But what if company remain on its large scale or economies of scale, you can say that, economies of scale. If company in long run or in its economies of scale or produce or its every total cost look like L-shaped, right? It means producing more goods gonna reduce its costs and it will reduce its market price. When the company reduces its market price, what happened? The competitors, they can no longer compete this company's market price and they exit the market. Right? Guys, you understand? Yes. Yeah. So in that case, this is called natural monopoly. So when a company, big company who manages to stay in its efficient scale, uh, before efficient scale in which producing more going to cost you less. In that case, it is eating its competitors, driving competitors out unless Nobody can compete its market price and its cost. So they exit the market and it remains only sole producer of the goods. But these kind of monopolies exist, yes, but their lifespan is a little limited because we know that even the long run, every total cost curve is a U-shaped curve. Ultimately, company has to touch its this economies of scale or cut the production. When company cut the production to back on its efficient scale, and then there is a room for entrance. New firms will come with better technologies, you know. So they're, they exist, yes, they exist, but for a short period of time. For example, I gave you the example at the start of Microsoft. Before it was a monopoly, and now we have Google coming up with their own operating system. We, Apple already came up with their Macintosh, you know, so in, when the time passes, natural monopoly is fading away and converted into uh, becoming more uh, towards, you know, going towards competition. So now you see the market of, of Microsoft is now broken down by, uh, mm, uh, by Apple, right? And now the new uh, operating system is coming from Google, right? Okay, so this is the uh, natural monopoly. In the natural monopoly, when firms, when one firm stays 
on its economies of scale. And what happened? It manages to reduce its cost at the lowest level for a longer period of time, driving out the competition and remains as a sole distributor of the product. So Antron firm, they know that they cannot achieve the lowest cost because after the entry market share will be divided. So normally fun, uh, you know, firms has trouble maintaining natural monopoly without ownership of a key resources or protection from the government. Like I told you, maybe in future new technology come and other companies, they find it more cheaper than this company to produce. So they enter the market, right? So monopolist profit attracts entrant firms despite large fixed costs and in the long run, monopoly loses its market powers. Which kind of monopoly? We're talking about natural monopoly. So the comparison between competition and monopoly is that monopoly is the sole producer or sole producer of the goods. Competitive firm, they are producing, uh, sorry, in this, there are many or several producers. Monopoly demand curve is downward sloping, right? Downward sloping. So it follows the law of demand, downward sloping. While the demand curve for com com competition is horizontal straight line because product is largely the same and everybody's price taker. So price line or demand line is straight horizontal line. Here the price line is downward sloping or demand line is downward sloping. So monopoly is a price maker, competitive firm is price taker. So in order to increase the sales monopoly, it reduces the price so that law of demand activate and their sales goes up. Right, the sales goes up. Whereas the competitive firm, they cannot reduce the price because price is the same for everyone. Nobody controls the price. So they rely on the market, that's it. They rely on the number of customers. If the number of customers more come to its, its, its shop, its sales can increase. Otherwise, it depends on customers because they don't have any uniqueness in the product products are largely the same.